Just got back from the Pro Tour, and there's a BNR update out. Thought I'd uh, talk about it, get my opinions on what I think about this BNR update. So, what happened? So, we have a uh, ban that I have been waiting for for a long time. Crown of Seeds. And we also had Berserk banned. No other changes in any other formats. I'm going to give my opinions on the other formats in a minute of some things that I think that could be banned. But first of all, let's talk about what did happen. Berserk, uh, I think, would be the shorter one to talk about, so let's go over that first. Uh... I'm pretty happy seeing this band. It's kind of one of those, like, let's get ahead of this before this becomes a problem. Uh, if you don't know why this is banned, basically there's a OTK deck that you can make with it. Uh, typically you play it in Reinar because you get the Intimidate uh, while you're doing this. So it means you can push through more actualized damage while you're doing it. Uh, essentially, you'll crack your uh, bean trackers to get an action point. You'll play like a Blood Rush Bellow and the Berserk on the same round. And then throw like four or five attacks at your opponent. And it just overwhelms them and they can't block it. And it just kills them and there's nothing they can do about it. Pretty unfun to play against. Uh, you know, these kind of OTK decks probably shouldn't exist in Fab, to be honest. It's just not a game that's designed... To deal with these types of things and even when there are tools that theoretically can deal with it the way that fab is it's hard to find these things you can't just like always have access to that and not every deck even has access to those tools like you know it could be something like oh well ice is good against this well that means ice is good against it not everything is good against it so uh, dealing with this before it becomes a problem i, I like that it's kind of like the stubby hammers band it's like okay you guys had your fun uh, someone figured out that this is broken. No more of that. Now, the uh, more interesting one, Crown of Seeds. I have been asking for this to get banned for so long. So long. Uh, I, I don't remember if I've talked about it on the channel. I feel like I have. But it was one of those things where I really wanted them to ban this while it's not seeing play. You know... You may say, like, oh, well, it's not seeing play. Why ban it? It's, like, not a problem. Let's ban it when it is a problem. I'm personally a fan of uh, banning cards that are a problem before they're a problem or before they're impacting things because one of the reasons they don't ban legendaries typically in the game is because that negatively impacts people's wallets. You don't want to buy a $100, $200 legendary and then go play and you're ready to play and then it's banned and you're like well i just spent all this money on this deck and this card and now my deck just i just got the rug pulled from under me that feels bad so i am a fan of them you know taking that approach normally but sometimes legendaries are still a problem so what better time to deal with it when there's not even a deck that could legally play this card get rid of it because it will always be a problem and i think that the briar deck that charles played at nationals was a great example of that it will always be a problem just oh the briar deck function because it had earth on the subtyping like it's, it's one of those things where it's like just get rid of it like why are we trying to fuck around and find out on this card just to deal with it while it's not going to impact anyone's wallets the only people that are going to be impacted by this financially are the people that speculated on it because one day earth will come back I think negatively impacting speculators on something like that is perfectly fine. And honestly, the direction the game's going, Living Legend is going to become more and more important. So it still has a home over there. So it's not like the card's going to go to zero. It's always going to be good in that format with Starvo and Ultim. And hey, who knows? Maybe Briar becomes good in that format with Crown of Seeds. Probably not, but you never know what happens. So I'm a massive fan of this band. Let's get rid of it and we can move over to elemental heroes with one less thorn in our side now as i said there are no other bands so uh, i guess the real opinion that i want to talk about here is should there have been more bands does this format need any bands or the other formats first of all let's talk about the classic constructed format i think that heavy hitters was one of the best sets for classic constructed that we've seen in a long time i think uprising was like the last time I really saw people get really excited about a set for classic. You know, this is anecdotal. I, I'm not gonna, I don't have the data that LSS has behind this, but like people were excited to open packs. People were excited to mess around with these new decks. And it was a level of excitement that I really haven't seen since then. Outsiders really didn't hit that well. Like, like it, it, the heroes, they weren't that exciting. It's like these slow grindy control decks where you're just trying to stop your opponent from enacting their game plan 
it's not that exciting. It's hard to be like really excited about like a trap. Uh, Dust to Dawn. That set fell kind of flat on release because the nothing was meta out of that set. And then you have uh, Bright Lights. Again, nothing that exciting other than Dash IO. The other two heroes like just haven't had a chance to really shine yet. So, you know, hard to get excited about a deck that's not meta. We had that moment of Dash being exciting, but it wasn't quite enough to like make people go out there and go crazy over a mech set because it's just that one group of people that's going to be excited about that, mech players. And then we move on to this set where honestly, all three classes were supported to a level that it made some of these new heroes good and it brought new life into old heroes. So you've got people coming out of the woodwork that have been wanting to play these classes for a long time. They are old heroes for a long time, getting excited to deck build again. So on that front, I think this set's been a great hit. And I think the balance of the format has been actually really good. We had that whole discourse a little while ago over uh, if an open meta is good or bad, and I feel like I should make a video on that at some point. Uh, I'm still articulating my thoughts on that video of what I want to talk about in it. But I think it was, yeah, it was an open format, which is good for the average consumer. You, It's not a, you're playing the best deck, the thing that beats the best deck, or you're just a clown for bringing anything else. You could play whatever, which is good for the consumer and being able to buy product because you can just buy, you know, work on any deck that strikes your fancy. So a big part of why it's been a good open format is because there haven't been that many outliers in the format of something that's like dumb or broken. Uh, everything's power level is actually pretty close to each other. Within the format, I don't think there's anything that really needs banning right now of just raw power level things broken right now. Like the, the things that you could really look at for that would be uh, KO or KNO. Uh, let's go into KO first because, uh, that, again, that's going to be a bit easier to talk about than Kano. Uh, KO, I think, undisputedly, is the best deck in format. Uh, it's a very powerful deck. The math of it's very good. It's fairly consistent in enacting its game plan and asks some difficult questions of your opponent. There's a couple powerful cards in that deck that, like, you could look at, but, like, I don't think Cast Bones is banned worthy. It is an above rate card, it is a good card. It's no codex. It's like the difference of codex versus cast bones is pretty big in my opinion, though I would say they're comparable at least. But I don't think it's anywhere close to being ban worthy, especially if codex wasn't ban worthy. And the same with Blood Rush Bellow, it's a powerful card. And both of those kind of fall in line with the decks are allowed to do powerful things and have powerful cards. We need these exciting moments in games where, you know, these flashy things happen. Otherwise, we're just pushing numbers around and the game's kind of boring. The one thing I would look at, though, that I think should be banned at some point, but it feels like Crown, where it was in that space, honestly, it feels more like Storm Striders, where it was in that space of they're just not going to ban this because it's a legendary. Uh, I'm going to get to that one in a second, Storm Striders, uh, is Scab Skin Leathers. Scabs is a dumb card. And honestly, I don't think it should have been printed. It doesn't fit in with uh, how Fab is and Fab works. It's... You know, the, the math on it is, uh, it's a risk reward thing where you can roll the dice and you may just lose your turn and other times you get some extra action points. But it, it's, it's more than that. It's not just the math of rolling a dice because you're not looking at the times, if, if you say that, of when you're rolling scab skins. For example, oh shit, I'm losing the game and I, there's no way I can ever win this game. Let's roll some dice and see if I can get bailed out. Oops, I won a game I had no business winning. That doesn't feel good for anyone. Like, no no one... I mean, I, I mean, it might feel good for you being the well, one rolling the scabs there and stealing a win, but is that a good thing? You just rolling a dice for a win? Like, is that something that we want in Fab? And then, on the other end, you have the person that's just rolling scabs every turn incorrectly, probably. Like, let's not again... I don't want to get into that of whether or not they should or whether it's right. The fact of the matter is, some people do do this, and they just spam scab skins, and sometimes they get lucky and win a game because they just went, like, plus six off scab skins on action points. This is just, like, such a fake game, but this happens. And what are you supposed to do about that on the other side? There's, there's nothing you could do to stop your opponent from spamming a dice and getting lucky. That feels awful. But it is what it is. We're, we're probably never going to lose this. I, I, I think they could just 
get rid of it and it'd be perfectly fine because you have replacement boots that the brutes can play beaten trackers is a great piece of equipment it's not like they're like losing out in that spot of just like oh man now we lost this honestly i really wish scab skins was just different like uh, the design that i really liked for scabs was something along the lines of i personally really like cards that force you to engage with your gameplay loop and reward you for doing so so let's say every time you roll a dice or every time you discard a six or greater the two things the brute class is trying to do uh you get a counter on your boots and then uh let's make it like a once per turn thing maybe i don't know uh, and then you can remove six counters from your boots to gain an extra action point I, I like that. It's not a randomness thing. It's engaging with your gameplay loop and getting rewarded for doing so. But, you know, that's not going to happen. We're not going to just, like, see Scabs banned, though. I would love to see that. That's, like, the number one thing I would love to see in Fab. Number two thing would be some Kano uh, changes. And, man, you know, for all my complaining with Kano, I don't know what to do about it because... Anything you do to Kano negatively, like any bands, all you're doing is destroying the deck for the most part. And that's not something I want to do. I don't want to say, like, screw you, Kano players. Uh, your deck is now deleted. I don't want that. But it's such a fragile thing right now where the deck does some, the most broken things in the game. But it quickly goes from doing the most broken things to just being an unplayable pile of trash if you get rid of something. Because, like... You know, uh, Wildfire is probably the number one most broken thing in the deck. Uh, Storm Striders is another thing. Like, Storm Striders is another dumb card that probably shouldn't exist in the game. We're not going to lose it. But, like, it's not going anywhere. If we weren't going to get it banned during the Icelander era, we're not getting it banned now. So I don't know what to do about Kano. Uh, it's like, do you go soft and just get rid of, like, Ragamuffins or something so they can't just, like, oops, OTK you out of nowhere? I don't know. The thing I would actually like to see is we get a new wizard set and before we get the new wizard set, they just do some like wild bands getting rid of some stuff in Kano and in that new set, replace it with a bunch of stuff that changes how you're supposed to play Kano on a fundamental level where it's not just um, these two styles of Kano where you're either like setting up this crazy combo or you're just oops blow your opponent up on the first cycle of the deck because they didn't have an oasis like for instance we got rid of some of these combo cards and replaced them with more of the like uh we got these in like dynasty i think the like uh, main phase kano stuff replace it with some things like that just like give you some different ways to play the deck that is interesting and still feels like kano I, I, this is not something that i can articulate in like uh, five seconds on a video of like the right way to do this and it's not like I'm saying yeah get rid of all of this and just make it a completely different deck I would still want it to feel like Kano I just think that the space that Kano's in right now is very volatile you, you can't get rid of things without destroying the deck you can't print new cards without making it broken Th that's a, like a, a weird space for design of what do you do with this now uh so i, I would like to just see them like gut it and tr start over with uh, something new i don't think they're gonna do that i feel like it's the wait for it to hit living legend and just give us a new kano but i, I don't think that we're losing kano anytime soon because it's one of those things where even if it's broken the meta is going to self-correct against it to push it down and make it hard to win. And Kano is a very hard deck to pilot. So it's not like we're just going to have like swaths of Kano players everywhere uh, getting all these living legend points. So I don't know. I, I don't know. If you guys have opinions on what you think should be done with Kano, let me know. Uh, if nothing should happen, that's perfectly reasonable. It's just I, I think Kano is a problem deck, has always been a problem deck, will always be a problem deck. So like, I don't know what to do about that. I almost forgot this one. Uh, Mask of the Pouncing Lynx. This is another one of those... I wanted this to get banned while it wasn't an issue and wasn't a problem. And it kind of keeps popping up again, on and off again. Uh, essentially, Mask generates way too much value for a headpiece. In Fi, at a minimum, it gives you five value since you get a Lava Burst with it. 
and that's the floor. The ceiling is way higher since you could get like a uh, salt the wound and now a tenacity letting you go crazy high value. You can get like, I don't know, eight value out of it sometimes depending on like how your opponent blocks and such. Is, is that the amount of value that is okay for an equipment to get? <laughs> it being worth more than a husk can, at sometimes? That's crazy. And now we have Katsu who can uh, gain access to triple bond crazy rounds out of it where you can grab one of your pieces with it after the first thing gets through. Uh, if any of you saw the battle hardened that happened recently, you can go kind of nuts with this card. I, I don't know. I feel like it was designed in a world where the things that you were able to get off of it were pretty fair. We got this before Phi came out. We got this before Bonds came out. I feel like it probably would have been fine if it just only grabbed ninja cards because then you couldn't grab these generics or uh, draconic cards off of it. But that doesn't necessarily solve the Katsu problem. But that's neither here nor there since that's not reality. It does grab these cards. The rate on Lynx is way far and beyond what a helmet should be able to do. Lastly, some other preemptive bands I could see would be like uh, ice cards before we get back to the elemental stuff again. Like I could see them getting rid of like the channels or, or something like that. And uh, Arc Light Sentinel. You know, I make crap on a wizard, but I, I know Illusionist is a problem too. And uh, after seeing New Prism and what sh dirty stuff she can do with Arc Light Sentinel of this combo game plan if you don't understand how this works i have a video about it on the channel where i explain how you can either arc light loop your opponent or um the play style of the new prism where you like arc light multiple rounds in a row it's oppressive honestly going into the weekend i'm on dromai a favorable matchup into prism and the two decks i was the most afraid of facing was still prism and then kano of course because like random things could happen at that like the game just spirals out of control from your opponent just like oops arc light uh looping you in the beginning of the game of just like they hit their figment of erudition into a bunch of tomes and just go crazy all of a sudden it's a problem i i don't i don't think this is what the intent with prism was for you to do these crazy shenanigans with arc light it, it doesn't it doesn't feel like a good deck to play as or against. All you're doing is saying you don't get to play the game. Watch me play the game from this side. And even when they finish doing that, there's just so much stuff on the board afterwards that it takes you turns and turns and turns to get through all of it. And by then, you've leaked so much damage from them just throwing shit at your face over and over. I, I am terrified of Prism in this next season of what she's going to do. And I, I, I think Arclight might be something that needs to go. I, I'm willing to accept the trade-off of get Luminaris, but lose Arclight. I think that's more than fair. For other formats, I don't have an opinion on Blitz. Blitz is not a format that I mess around with, so do not ever come to me if you want my high-level thoughts on that. But Living Legend, uh, that, that actually has some thoughts on after this weekend. Uh, so basically, the way the format shaped up was uh, Lexi's very good. Starvo's good, but it's not as crazy as it used to be, obviously. Um, it's been knocked down quite a peg. And uh, Chain is probably the best deck in the format right now. And then Prism's just kind of there. Prism doing Prism things. It has answers to lots of different decks. But it's not like inherently... It, it's not a deck that is going to be a best deck uh, by any stretch of the mind. Because it's just not a deck that does things that let it be a best deck. Lexi I think is perfectly fine as is. Just leave it alone. Uh, it's doing powerful things. But it's the type of deck that like the answers exist if people want to anti-meta for it. Starvo is now at the power level that it should be. And could just be left alone. I think it was not oppressive if people were just engaging with their game plan and it was good it was fine it was a good value deck it it did the thing chain though I, I think chain needs some looking at i think chain was like a little too powerful it could just be the case that people didn't bring enough tech for chain i know i personally had tech in my list to help deal with that matchup like i was aware that chain was probably going to be good with these bands but it, it didn't feel like it was enough it felt like it didn't matter what i did chain was just way too powerful maybe it's just like seeds need to, to go or something and i think dust blade was an issue I, I don't think dust blade is actually that good to be honest i think rosetta is just a better weapon especially the like how matchups play out for the most part even the fatigue matchups getting that early chip damage with arcane on your like first couple shackles i think matters more than the ramp up of dusk bladed most of the time uh, that's semantics like i you, you could look at the weapons but i think like something in the deck needs to get touched to like seeds just to like rein it in a little bit i think it's like close to being an appropriate power level for the format but i, I think it's just 
a little too heinous right now. Uh, but other than that, I don't think anything else was, like, crazy in the format. Viscera exists, but there's answers to it. Like, Starvo, for example, could run, um, what is it, Smack of Reality or something like that? I, I'm spacing on the name of the card. I'll throw an image up. But it's the one that, like, kills all their tokens. So, like, that that card is, like, an answer that exists in the format. There's, like, things you can do to stop Viscera or slow it down. But I think the format's, like, close to being in a good spot, which is honestly surprising to me after just one ban update. I, I was not expecting the format to be, like... Uh, reasonable after a single ban. But yeah, that's my thoughts on the BNR update. Uh, if you guys have any opinions, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Was there anything that you guys think should be banned or uh, anything that you think is worth looking at? If you like this content, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps support uh, everything that I do here. And check out my Patreon for some more strategy content. I'm going to be making a couple guides on there in the upcoming weeks of how to play uh, I'm, I'm basically blowing up my Dromai guide because, you know, more, no more Dromai, and I'm turning it into a strategy guide for every single deck in the game, as any deck in the game. Just like basic how do you beat specific decks type of guide, and I'm also going to be making some guides coming up of how to think about your turns in the game. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you.